Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar tonight on football in India, the SDA bar case study. It is a pleasure to have everyone connecting. Uh, we will get started now. So uh, let me first make sure that you guys can hear us. So what I'll ask you to do is in the chat box, if you can type in yes, and if you can also type in the country or the city where you're connecting from, and that way we will know that you can hear us and we'll also know what part of the world you are connecting from. So there's a chat icon there and um, that'll tell us that the sound is coming through okay on your side. So uh, if you just wanna confirm that with us, okay. So yes, from Nottingham, Tom, welcome. Eric from Oslo, welcome. Nizia from Belgium, Julian from Bulgaria. We have Julian from London and we have several others that are confirming as well so that's great okay from guatemala luis mattia from italy nice to have you shantanu from new delhi rahil okay fantastic well great to have you guys on board so happy to have you for our webinar tonight let me first introduce myself and uh, i'll go on to uh, introduce our speakers for tonight uh, my name is diego valdez i am the director at the sports business institute barcelona and what we do is we specialize in providing training for those that want to start and advance their career in the football industry. Now, tonight, we are joined by a special guest, Yoga Kumar, who is the new business development external officer at SDA Bar. And we see that Yoga is uh, online now. Welcome, Yoga. Nice to have you here. Welcome. Namaste. Buenas tardes. Bonsoir. Good evening to everyone. Excellent. Nice to have you here, Yoga. And we also have Edu Valdez, Eduardo Valdez from SDA Bar. So uh, let me find you here on uh, the screen, Edu, and uh, we can connect with you. So, hi, Edu. Welcome. Welcome to the session tonight. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can do it. Do you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. So thank you, everyone, to be, to be there. One more time. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure for us to, to share our experience with you. So, Perfect. Well, in just a moment, we're going to turn it over to Yoga, who will uh, give us a, a presentation. I'm just going to briefly share with you the structure of our webinar tonight. So it should last approximately anywhere from 45 to 60 minutes. And uh, the way we're going to work is Yoga is going to make a presentation where he'll provide an overview on the latest market trends of the Indian market. He's also going to talk about what SDA Bar is doing in India and the international strategy at the club, particularly in the Indian market. And then at the end, we're going to talk a little bit about our certificate program on how to run a successful football club that we run in partnership with uh, the club SDA Bar. But we'll do that at the end. And finally, we're going to open it up for your questions and answers. So that said, um, Yoga, it's a real pleasure to have you here tonight. Uh, we'll turn it over to you for your presentation, and after that, we'll we'll check back in for some Q and A's. Thank you, Diego. Uh, uh, many thanks for uh, introducing me to the participants today. I welcome you all for the presentation. Uh, let's go ahead, and if you have any doubts, please feel free to ask Diego, and Diego will direct it to me. If not, we'll have a Q and A at the end of the session. So these are the topics for today, and uh, I'll gradually start with the uh, history of Indian football. So football and India. So many would be wondering what is it? What, what history does football have in India? It's a cricket crazy country. Well, of course, we are a cricket crazy country, but we definitely have some football connection, and it's a very good history. If not to the likes of Brazil or like Spain, we definitely have some small, some modest history, which I'll be taking you through next. So when it comes to our starting of football, it was primarily introduced by British. Everybody know that British ruled India for quite some years in the past. And in the mid 19th century, British soldiers used to play this game. And that is how the game was played in India and that is how it was introduced. 
So basically, the game dates back to 1854, where there was a city called Barakpur, where there was a game between civilians and the the army, British army over there. And the next official football club was started in India, Calcutta Football Club, in the year 1872. And then everybody. will know their own football federations as well as to when they were started so most of the famous or like most countries which boast football their uh, federations were pretty much started in 1890s and india indian football association was also started in 1893 which means there was some sort of a professionalization steps which were started by india during the start very early in the 19th century and although it was started in 1893 until 20 years the next 20 years it was only in 1911 when a, uh, a team called mohan bagan which is still a very popular team in calcutta uh, one uh, team of uh, british yorkshire regiment soldiers uh, the first trophy and this is definitely see, seen as a big step for indian football where the football was no more uh, a lesser sport but some uh, serious sport afterwards the football gradually proceeded and it was in 1937 where the all india football federation was established and in 1954 india was also part of one of the founding members of the asian football confederations which is the organization for football in asia right now so this is the setup and this is how football was started in india and how india was one of the founding members of asian football confederation and the next decades say so as to 15 years india was quite bigger in the big scenes so in the 1954 melbourne olympics we finished fourth and in 1951 asian games we were the winners and then 1951 52 53 54 for the next four years we won the quadrangular cups colombo quadrangular cup and 1964 we were runners up in asia afc asia cup so we had a we had a very good footballing past in the 50s and 60s and this is considered to be def- definitely a golden period in the indian football at least in asian level what happened in the next 20 years is gradual fall of the quality of football and also take over of other other games cricket took over in 1983 although the number of people visiting football games was on the rise uh, when the salt lake stadium which is quite one of the most iconic venues of the world uh, the the seating capacity of the whole stadium was 120000 people so it meant that football was hugely watched and followed uh, in specific parts of the country and that's it uh, this is on the history of indian football and next i'll be proceeding towards what we have been doing as sta bar in uh, india for now uh, i guess like it will be very interesting uh, okay so we started our plans on lines with uh, laliga's uh, facebook uh, deal uh, which took place this season uh, which is la liga is published in facebook in many countries in the indian subcontinent india pakistan bangladesh sri lanka nepal bhutan maldives so we wanted to make sure that this is a good time for sda bar to be marketed in india india is a huge uh, football potential country and we wanted to be there as well so so th- that is when when thinking we had a unique connection uh, indian slow history and uh, uh, 1947 is a very important year in the history of indian independence that is the year when the british left us and gave us our freedom as the abar as its unique importance to 1947 as well where its current stadium ipro was constructed in the year 1947 so we use this as a unique connecting factor to establish some sort of a connection as it was the first campaign we did in india it was a social media campaign 
Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and it was very well received. As like people could connect to SDA bar as well because there was some sort of a similarity. Uh, Pedro Leon uh, is quite popular as there as well, having played uh, for Real Madrid previously, so he was very very much well received. And during the campaign, we had a huge sort of interest from all sort of football fans, not only football fans of local clubs in India, but also football fans uh, of Barcelona, Real Madrid, Manchester United, Liverpool, everyone. They had like a unique connection to the campaign and they felt quite connected to us during this case where we had some sort of a special connection established with fans, especially from Kerala, which we didn't plan. And during this time, uh, we had uh, uh, a cyclone or like a uh, pledge, a national and uh, a natural disaster happening in Kerala. Uh, it's a Kerala is a state down south in India. And we wanted to convey some sort of written thanks to them. So we conveyed our condolences through Pedro Leon. Pedro Leon uh, like, uh, asked uh, the fans to stay strong and uh, come out of this uh, disaster. And that was well received by Kerala fans as well. And ever since that, we have some sort of a unique uh, connection with uh, Kerala uh, in India. And we are uh, quite happy about that. It was all uh, destiny is what I, I meant to say. And even now, like 40% um, of our uh, SDA Bar fans in India are from Kerala. So next I go to our tagline, which is another football is possible. So those who are listening to this um, webinar, I would recommend you to also check our uh, colleague, Eduardo Valdez's previous uh, uh, webinar piece, where he explains about our SDA board values and why it's unique and why we term our tagline as another football is possible. It is due to our financial transparency, zero debts, the women's empowerment, more than 50% of our uh, women employees in the management or uh, more than 50% of uh, employees in our management are women. So we actually do stand for women empowerment with our president, a woman as well. So we have certain unique, unique uh, factors uh, and the tagline is just about perfect for us and the football is possible. This is, of course, uh, our uh, uh, marketing uh, potential as well. So for India, we designed a term, another following is possible. This, is, this should be interesting for uh, many of you. So as you know, India has its own connection with uh, British. And it was very normal for uh, uh, somebody to be following uh, an English Premier League. So it is also due to the fact that English Premier League was very early to India due to the TV rights in the early 2000s. And then, so it is very common for somebody to follow in English football, English teams, as well as to the likes of Real Madrid and Barcelona. People follow Italian football, or fans follow like German football. So it is, it is very, very, very difficult for somebody of like our club who's modest, who's not like in the top end of uh, uh, of a league, say, uh, to go and approach to uh, become a fan for uh, anybody. So we, we decided, like, we can be the second team. It should be, should be an interesting thing. Uh, we did never want it to be. Uh, uh, it's not that we never wanted to be. We thought, like, we could be the second uh, team followed by some other fan. For example, uh, Liverpool or uh, Arsenal fan could also follow uh, SD Bar in La Liga. It's the same likewise. Uh, even if uh, somebody is a Barcelona fan, if they, they play Real Madrid, they could still support Ava. So we just wanted to be uh, a, a second favorite team as well. So, so this sort of uh, narration worked with us and it's been working with us. So I, th I think uh, we'll continue to do so. Let's see like, if we can develop uh, unique fans with it. And our story is quite unique. Uh, uh, having been in La Liga for the last five years, last year, we finished uh, ninth uh, uh, in the table and uh, we are one of the four bass clubs and we finished uh, above all the three other bass clubs uh, which is uh, which have been in la liga for so so long so it's quite a great achievement and this year also we've been struggling to 
like finish in the top end of the table and uh, hopefully we'll do so so we have some unique stories in terms of whatever campaigns we have done in the past and the own values which as i mentioned previously and i believe like our stories will definitely have a place in um, the indian subcontinent um, whenever i whenever i connect to someone uh, to explain about sdi bar many of you might have been um, uh, familiar with the 300 movie so in that 300 movie the spartans are basically 300 in number and the persians probably thousands and thousands aor is a town which is a home to inhabitants of 27000 people probably if the whole city decides to go and watch a game in bernabeu even three three times the city cannot fill the stadium in bernabeu that's the population of aor so we compare ourselves to spartans and those who come to ipruva stadium they could be the persians so if you look at the movie um, the spartans finally will be defeated but it is not about the defeat it is about how will you fight before you get surrendered or bit sorry before you get defeated and our team is pretty much like that we we might not have unique stars but every one of uh, the footballer in the in this team will fight until the last moment uh, to get a result for us and it was evident this year where we beat real madrid 3-0 at home and everybody was like quite happy and elated at that point of time which is also very much uh, a success attributed to hard work of so many people the last five years hopefully the fairy tale story of aibar will keep continuing and we could tell our stories to the rest of the world and now next we i'll focus on the regional focus i already mentioned like how we have developed unique fan base in kerala so we are looking at uh, partners or uh, uh, football development programs in kerala not only in kerala but other parts of the country as well but we as a uh, club would definitely try and focus region where like we have so much uh, traction uh, we are in the process and discussing potential uh, partners hopefully there will be soon deals and as they were if you look at our uh, past a way of working i'm sure edu might have explained our working in japan where in uh, mm, uh, we don't want to go to a country just to play a football friendly and come back we want to go to a country be closer to the community and then get closer to the community and then be part of the community so we want long standing relationships and for that it is very very very, very important to find the right partners which actually meet our club values uh, it's very important we are in the right process and constant process uh, as of now in india we have also tied up with one of uh, the sporting institutions uh, to probably offer them work or like we could use them for um, our work in india so in this way we also look at how to make strategic partnerships is not only football development teams but also with institutions or uh, other uh, organizations which are actually uh, uh, focused on improving the game in the country so this is pretty much uh, uh, the strategy we have been um, following in india as of now please look forward to our campaigns for the more uh, we'll continue to do so so next is um, the impact of under 17 world cup so fifa always had its eye on india because india is one of the fastest growing economies in the world and the amount of marketing and the potential that india has fifa has always been interested on in india so the decision to award the under 17 world cup to india the 2017 under 17 under 17 world cup to india was on december 2013 and india beat the likes of azerbaijan republic of ireland and uzbekistan to get this uh, done um, once the uh, tournament was awarded to india the 
existing football federation in India formed a three-year strategic plan from 14 to 17 with a lot of uh, uh, strategic points to develop the infrastructure as well as prepare the country to face uh, such a big uh, footballing event in the country. Um, and then um, I'd like to discuss upon the infrastructure that was developed. Six uh, stadiums were refurnished and developed to the state of art, which is a, uh, expected by FIFA standards. And there were 24 uh, training state of the art facilities which was developed. And then were, there were 26 um, uh, federated uh, natural pitches which was developed. So infrastructure which you develop for uh, a sporting event, but these are also bound to stay for uh, next few years where it is uh, an important asset for uh, training of uh, the next level of players. India has always capitalized on big sporting events, be it 1982 Asian Games or uh, 2010 Commonwealth Games. In FIFA Under-17 World Cup also, the infrastructure was uh, very well developed and this is this is for sure going to develop a lot of uh, opportunities for training and other things. As far as uh, the performance of the Indian team is concerned, uh, it was a tough group to have been pulled with uh, USA, Ghana and Colombia. I started the game with USA and lost 3-0 and then we ended up uh, losing to Colombia the next game and also to Ghana. The sporting side of things could have been very bad, but however, it highlighted the importance of uh, grassroots and uh, youth level programs that needs to be developed, uh, which I'll be talking uh, later. And as far as the crowd is considered, the total amount of people who have visited uh, the World Cup was 1.3 million people approximately. And uh, the in, uh, average uh, attendance of the games were 25,000 approximately. Um, the average uh, games attended when India was playing was 50,000 and the final was about 66,000 people. So people say that apparently it overcome the number of people to have watched the game during the 2011 Cricket World Cup. Just quite a astonishing achievement and uh, it is it is by far the most attended the under-17 World Cup in its history. So it means to say the interest which it gathered and created amongst the public of India is quite huge. And any such tournament should have legacy programs. And one such legacy program of this under-17 World Cup is of course Mission 11 million. This also started well before the tournament as well. Uh, uh, the, what is this Mission 11 million? Mission 11 million is one of the key programs which is developed by government as well as the FIFA local organization committee, which aims at making 11 million school kids play the game of football uh, from around 15,000 schools in India. So it, it is basically into three types of uh, phases. One is reaching out to the phase where uh, the organizers of this mission reach out to the schools, call for the PET teachers to come and get uh, special training on how to conduct and where to do it, how to do it, and all those things. The second phase is basically the implementation, where the coaches or the school teachers can train the kids to play in different types of conditions, football, different types of teams, organizations, and all that. The third phase is basically uh, football festivals where students from different uh, uh, parts of the country can come and compete each other in their way also forging competitions. So this is bound to continue for the next few years as well. So I mean like legacy programs are very important. Um, this is one such a program but it is very important that these programs are also backed by some professionals be it like either in the technical level or uh, coaching level. So that is uh, uh, the thing on uh, FIFA and the World Cup. So current scenario, I mean to say, 
as far as Indian leagues were concerned, National Football League was started in the year 1996. And until, say, next 11 years, it continued in the same name, where it was, say, 2007, it was named I-League. And then uh, it had its own teams uh, competing uh, for the title. And then in 2014, saw the upsurge of another tournament called Indian Super League. This is basically started by a partnership of two corporates, ING Group and Reliance Group, with also broadcasters, uh, Star Sports, which were one of the main broadcasters in Southeast Asia. So this involved basically corporates and uh, top business individuals, as well as cricketing stars and Bollywood stars to come together, to contribute uh, to a post tournament, which was considered initially. And uh, this aimed at uh, uh, developing the sport, uh, but also uh, to try and be a change to the existing I leagues. The problem is the I league uh, was that it was considered to have uh, financial instability within the clubs. A poor quality of the game and poor marketing abilities of the league, which which meant that it was not really popular amongst the Indian public. ISL wanted to change this, and they came up with uh, some partners with the stars from um, Europe, for example, the likes of um, Luis Garcia, Roberto Carlos, all um, Matarazzi. Uh, they came and played in uh, India, uh, and this. This definitely uh, like brought in a lot of interest into the public, football was in public at least. Uh, and that is how there was a, a, like, uh, a pull from the public to watch these games. And, and it's only a normal thing that two leagues of different nature are like at a tussle right now. And uh, although initially uh, AFF and uh, FIFA, uh, AFC and FIFA, um, like considered I League as a primary. A ISL also are trying to get their uh, relevant importance and getting the AFC Cup slots. So it is it is still a tussle um, uh, between these two leagues. Although there is a common cry that uh, the le these leagues to be merged, and it would be great if these leagues are merged for both for the fans and and for the for the investors uh, in general because uh, the concentration on developing a unique league uh, uh, in india would be would be would be much more focused this is what uh, i'm thinking uh, at uh, this point of juncture so the perception of football in the past has always been like uh, football is a very tough sport uh, it is very diff difficult to play in uh, India, um, due to its geographical terrains, hot and humid climate and climatic conditions. Uh, how can somebody run for 90 minutes in such hot weather and all this? If you consider cricket, people say it's like uh, even the shortest version of the game is uh, three hours and it's considered to be quite intense. These are, these are all stories which are in the past. And now, once the interest in the sport has been developed, current perception of the public has changed and everybody is for football and it's such a nice thing that uh, football is definitely growing in India. Uh, what needs to be done is like there has to be more influx of professionalism in the sport uh, and structural changes uh, in its organization. Uh, when you look at the future, um, one important big announcement is that India is going to host the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup in 2020. Uh, if you look at uh, the entire world football, women's football is something which is rapidly picking up. Somebody, if they decide that women's football is not a growing sport or something, I think they should change their perception. It's one of the fastest growing sport in the uh, in the world and the sooner somebody gets on it, it's better for them to 
realize the importance of it. So I see it as a very big step towards uh, uh, continuation of football legacy programs. Uh, in the picture, you can find uh, a star player right now, Dalima Chibar. Uh, she's 21 years old right now, but she's been playing in under 13 teams. Uh, uh, sorry, under uh, 17, under 13, under 15 teams for quite some time, and she has come through the ranks and. She's been definitely seen as uh, one of the star players, and she's such an inspiration for uh, a lot of young girls playing in the sport. And uh, maybe uh, the the tournament uh, should be aimed at uh, finding stars like this. Uh, so this is it um, on huge potential. Yeah, India has. Huge potential in terms of growth following, uh, and Indians have always uh, watched uh, European football. What needs to be done is like uh, the mindset of uh, people, especially the parents. In India, it's uh, not normal uh, for parents to easily allow their children to play a sport because still majority of the parents are not convinced that uh, somebody can make a career in sport, especially in football. Uh, I think this needs to be changed, and this is the first step. I believe uh, needs to be changed. The next one is, um, I think, uh, there needs to be a change in the youth development and grassroots development programs. If you look at ISL, uh, one of the basic uh, licensing conditions is that the team should have uh, grassroots level uh, teams. Uh, sorry, youth level uh, teams within them, and it's, it's such a mandatory aspect. And it is considered that since the inception, it's been five years, and ISL will take over or uh, take care of the grassroots levels or, and youth level teams of individual clubs for seven years. And after seven years, which is two years from now, the clubs should take over the their individual programs. And this, in a way, is is okay, but wish. The clubs are also serious in they are realizing the importance of uh, the the football in the grassroots level and also in the youth level. So this is the second thing I think it's very important. The third thing has to definitely has to be the commercial aspect of things. Commercials, I mean, um, there has to be a huge uh, uh, like focus towards marketing and uh, professionalization broadcasting and sponsorships uh, this is one area which i believe like we as a whole country was lacking in terms of uh, finding the right partners uh, who were ready to invest uh, in football um, also in the marketing and sponsorships so i believe uh, there should be um, if somebody wants to be closer to the indian community to be any football club any football organization with India, I think they should concentrate on how they could change the perception of these things, the 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 trust, the youth and youth development and trust um, programs, but also the commercial side of things. Somebody is able to contribute in these lanes. I think they are in with a great chance to be closer to the Indian football, and definitely will have a key role in playing, uh, uh, growing the sport in India. So that's it. I hope uh, you had a good session of uh, uh, Indian football. Uh, I'm willing to listen to you all. And if I'm not able to answer your questions right now, you can always get in touch with me later. Post it. Diego? Yeah. Thank you, Yoga. Thank you for running through all these uh, very interesting points that you shared with us. Because not only did you tell us you know, about the strategy that the club uh, has in India and you broke it down, but you also um, identified what the market is like. You told us about the history, of course, and uh, you know, and uh, and you also outlined, of course, the importance of the Under-17 World Cup and where where things lie in the future for the Indian market. So I think we take a lot away from what you shared with us tonight. Um, at this point, what we'll do is we'll have you guys start typing your questions. Anything that you'd like to ask Yoga, you know, put it in the chat box. We will select. 
some of the questions that you guys um, you know put in the chat box uh, you know anything related to the Indian market uh, if you want to talk a little bit more about the strategy that uh, Abar has if you want to ask perhaps about what La Liga is doing as well you know Yoga and, uh, and Edu who we're going to incorporate in just a moment will be able to uh, answer uh, your question so while you start typing those questions what we wanted to do is we wanted to tell you a little bit more about a program that SBI and SDA Bar are delivering in partnership, which is called How to Run a Successful Football Club. This certificate essentially was born because, as, as Yoga was saying, A Bar is a club that is admired because of the nature of its management model. Um, you know, you mentioned uh, earlier in your presentation, Yoga, that the whole town of Abar, you could fit it three times into the uh, Santiago Bernabeu of Real Madrid. So that just goes to show that this club is, uh, you know, located in a very small um, city in Spain. Uh, and yet they continuously uh, have a successful management model that is admired and that is looked at from across different people in the industry. In fact, it was just named as one of the fastest growing companies, and not just sports companies, companies uh, by the Financial Times for the second year running. So just goes to show that this club is doing things right. And that's why we wanted to highlight um, this management model. And we incorporated this certificate entitled How to Run a Successful Football Club. Now, I'll just run through very briefly a couple of points because we do want to get to your questions. Um, and I'll, I'll get uh, Edu to, uh, to come in as well at this point um, to tell us a little bit more. So Edu, uh, let me just unmute your microphone. Uh, if we can find uh, Edu here, I think we don't have Edu. Just one second, like as we're looking for him. There we go. Edu, can you hear us? Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, perfect. So Edu, you know, I was just talking about this certificate program, but um, perhaps you want to add something as to what is, uh, you know, how did this certificate originate and who is it aimed at and uh, what are the benefits? Of, you yeah, know, of sure. what we're yeah, well, uh, actually, we, we ha I think that we have created a standing course based on the main insights of the whole areas of the club, which will, will be provided by the SDA bar professional employees. I think that's a uh, key important. Why? Because we, we will share all of us, our experience, our methods, our strategies, and the know-how that we have acquired here in the, in the sport industry, right? So thank you uh, with the, of this certificate. Um, the aim that we have is uh, give you the chance to connect with us, challenge yourself, through our practices cases that you will find every week, right, Diego? Uh, which we have faced during the last few years. So you will have to challenge yourself with some projects that we have been working on during the last year. Some of them we resolve in in the best way as possible, and other one, well, we 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 didn't. Uh, but we learn a lesson, and that lessons we will share with you. So you will learn from a wide range of tips coming from the multiple areas of the club. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's it's an opportunity essentially to embed yourself. That's probably the yeah. best way to describe it. You're embedding yourself inside a football club across yeah. all its areas and looking at how it's done and you know that's why we wanted to bring yoga as well on board tonight because this is just one area and looking at what the club is doing in india and the internationalization strategy but this course yeah. is going to look at every aspect of the club including the sporting side right edu yeah, yeah yeah and the idea is trying to get in you as much close as possible to the reality of the industry one thing is what you read or what you study on books or you can check over the whole social media and newspaper, whatever you read or learn. But all the thing is the experience that you get from inside. And you don't have that much opportunity in the market to try to connect with people who is actually working on clubs 
or federation. So in this, in this case, you will have the opportunity to do it, to connect with us and to exchange information, to learn from a different uh, perspective and the way that we do the things. Yes, so uh, what we'll do is just very briefly run through a couple yeah. points because we do want to get to the questions that, uh, that our audience has tonight. So who is this aimed at? Well, if you're already working in the football industry, say in another market, and you want to acquire management skills, leadership capabilities to develop yourself and you know, achieve organizational growth and uh, you know, take away what some of the, the best practices and the lessons learned that Abar have done to your club and your organization, you know, this, is, uh, this is a course that very well will serve you. Likewise, there's a lot of people that are looking to transition and to gain um, you know, an entry point into the football industry, leveraging their previous corporate background. Well, that's that's another you know um, uh, target that this club that this certificate will um, you know will will solve uh, yeah. and enhance those career opportunities. Right. Um, we also um, you know had a couple of people that are interested in this program who have gotten in touch with us that are looking to invest in a football club. So what better way to understand? the inner runnings of a football club than by looking at what goes on, you know, day in, day out across all the different sectors uh, and all the different areas inside the club. So, you know, it also uh, can attract people who are looking to invest or get involved in the football industry from that standpoint. And of course, people who want to start a career, people who are, you know, maybe recently graduated or looking to break into the football industry. Again, this provides you an opportunity to understand from the inside how a club works. Yeah, couple yeah. of both. Actually, just if you can come back to the to the to the other slide, that is true that most of us, all the the professionals that we are working in the club, we come from a different areas and from different sectors. In my case, I, I come from the from the cars uh, industry, and Yoga he, he used to be a consultant. So we 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 don't come just or we don't grow just in the in the football uh, industry on in the sport industry so we really understand those professionals that they are willing to come to the or start uh, their careers in in football and we can give them uh, some tips to how to get it there yeah absolutely absolutely very good point so we, we've sort of covered this already the takeaways well you're going to learn from the SDA bar staff as Edu was saying uh, look at the best practices from what uh, you know the industry leaders across the club and the people that the club engages with, and also lessons learned. As Edu was saying, I mean, there's opportunities to you know provide you guys with challenges as to what some of the you know some of the yeah what some of the challenges that the club is facing. We're going to challenge you, and we're going to you know we're going to ask for your input because you know there's a lot of people out there with uh, some very innovative and creative ideas, and and we want to hear from you, and the club wants to hear from you. Um, so that's something else that, uh, you know, that's going to be covered. Obviously, first-hand access to the ecosystem of SDA Bar, the management module, which, is, which we already covered. Um, you know, building meaningful relationships with uh, the people from the club, and not only those from the club, but also those participating in the program. We have people already registered from Asia, from Latin America, from Europe, uh, the Middle East. So there's people that are coming from all over the globe to come to this program um, and learn from uh, what SDA Bar has to share. And Edu, one of the great things is at the end, uh, we're all going to get together and uh, go to the stadium at Ipurua and have an opportunity to see what you guys do on a day-in, day-out uh, day basis, right? Yeah, hopefully. That's something that we try to promote because uh, from our perspective, after the whole course and once that you get the whole overview of the club, if you come to Avar, you can see with your own eyes what we have been talking the, the the latest months in the course, right? So you will have the chance to live a, a experience in in Avar, in Ipurua, inside of the club. So I think that's quite important if if, if we talk about this uh, this particular particular certificate. Yeah. Excellent. So we, we won't uh, delay too long uh, with this because we want to get to your questions. If you want information about this course, have a look at our website, www.sbibarcelona.com. You'll see a banner there and you'll see all the information. 
get in touch with us, send us an email, and we'll you know we'll answer all your questions. We'll get um, in touch with you to to let you know about you know what this course could potentially offer you if you decide to enroll. That said, let's go to the questions that uh, you know we have at the the subject at hand for tonight with the Indian market. So we have several that are coming through. So yoga, let me start um, looking at some of them, and we can um, you know we can begin to tackle them. So. <laughs> Have a look. Let's have a look here. And he says, um, we have a question from Mihir Pandaya. So Mihir says, is there a certain PR strategy that Abar or other or other mid-level clubs from La Liga are using the in within the Indian market? Sorry, especially since there is a huge language barrier. So, how about uh, what um, you know, other clubs or particularly also what Abar is doing? Um, Using uh, you know what um, Mihir is saying here, uh, what what PR strategy? You covered some of these points, but did you want to add anything more, uh, Yoga? Yeah, when it comes to languages, uh, as you know, India is a very multilinguistic uh, country. Uh, it's a federal republic country working in a parliamentary system consisting of 29 states and seven union territories, and almost like each state has its own language. So it's very difficult to commonize a particular language to connect to the Indian public. And moreover, the narrative with respect to Indian social media connection is that uh, when you use English, it's, it's fine for the public. When you, when you tend to use any other uh, language, people get, get connected to it, but still see it as like oh, something like that. Or like English is still fine for uh, communication with uh, uh, Indian uh, audiences or like Indian fans. However, uh, you could occasionally try and get uh, closer to a particular community by using their own language, unless and until it is a very unique thing which you want to get connected to a particular region, English should be fine. This is what uh, my understanding is. And as far as any other club is also considered, I haven't seen like any special sort of uh, emphasis or effort towards using a particular language. Interesting. So thank you for, for your question. We have another question from Bruno, and he says, uh, both for, for Yoga and Edu, he asks, do you believe that the approach being made by ABAR in India could be transferable to other emerging markets and on going further, even transferring it to markets where football is already consolidated, like South America or other countries across Europe? So. Um, I would leave this to Edu. Uh, Edu is the international marketing coordinator, so he's the best one to answer. Both of us, we can we can answer the, that question. Um, well, the thing is that we have to separate the strategy that we want to use uh, for one country to another one. We have to learn of the context of the country, their culture, and then we have to set a proper uh, strategy over that country. So the same things and the same way that we have tried to connect with the Indian market, it's not going to be possible to do or to translate or transform that uh, strategy to other to other country. It's, it's, I think, from our own point of view and our experiences that it's not going to work. Well, the thing is, for sure, there are some ways that you can uh, reply to another to another country, the way that you can get inside of a, of the country, for sure. I don't know, Yoga. If you want to add any other thing, yeah, pr pretty much you have said it. Uh, it's very difficult to to reciprocate a particular strategy to another country because the culture is definitely going to be different. Uh, however, if you consider uh, it being it say within a subcontinent, like in the Indian subcontinent. Maybe there's not much strategy difference between using it in Bangladesh and India and Sri Lanka. But if you are here considering uh, country differences like, say, Thailand, Indonesia, and India, there's going to be some differences. And you need to ac account for the cultural differences. And you need to be with a different strategy to get connected to that particular culture. It's as simple as that. Hmm. 
Very good. Thank you, Bruno. Thanks for that question. Very interesting. Um, we have another question here from Akshay. Akshay actually is a, is a former SBI student, so nice to see you online, Akshay. And he says, what opportunities are available in SDA bar within India for aspiring candidates looking to kickstart their career in the football industry? And I think this is an interesting question going back to the, the certificate program that we were talking about before because, um, you know, from what we've been able to see firsthand, ABAR is a very open club and very receptive to, you know, to new ideas and uh, having, uh, you know, people like, like yourself, Edu, and, uh, and Yoga that are, uh, you know, looking for opportunities in new markets. So I'll, I'll throw that one out there for you guys to, to let us, uh, you know, add an, any additional input that you wanted to add uh, to that particular question as to how uh, SDA bar works with, um, you know, perhaps maybe you can tell us, Yoga, about uh, about your own path with the club or, or Edu, anything that you guys like to share on that. Go ahead, Yoga. Okay, so I think my uh, path which I approached uh, Abar should be should be good enough for anybody who's trying to connect with Abar. So I myself uh, enrolled uh, in one particular sports uh, business uh, institute uh, in the past year. And through the program, we got in touch with Abar. And once I got in connection with uh, Abar after visiting the club and the city, I felt connected to the city. And it is then up to the individual to be of unique in trying to connect with the business professional in the industry. And it is up to you to do the networking and be of difference than anybody. You should not be waiting for anyone else. You yeah. should be shrewd. And you should show the difference, you should grow the passion. And who knows if there is an opportunity in the club who is already looking for candidates, you might just fill the occupancy. And I believe Edu was not looking at only our institute, he was probably looking at eight, 10, 20 other candidates. And he just told me when I actually <laughs> got selected. So I was one of the candidates who was like selected by him. But yeah. Uh, Moment you get in connection with a with a, with a business professional from this industry, you have to network and get in touch with them. Try to get their time and try to prove your skills and abilities for every single opportunity. Once you do that, if the opportunity is provided, if you prove it, I'm sure not only a but any other club is also open to any work for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would remark the word, the word uh, proactive. You have to be yep. all the time trying to learn, to spend time uh, investing. Not don't spend. Don't say spend. Invest time on on learn, and uh, what yoga says. Uh, try to connect with as much people as possible to try to look for the best possibility to to get there. So it's true that the, the, a new trend that we have in this industry is that we are getting more and more professional, professional, yeah. And we need talent. So we are all the time checking for new talent all over the world. Of course, depending on the club, if they are focusing more on the international uh, perspective or more to the local or national, but in our case, and I, I, I know already that in Spain, a lot of teams from La Liga, they are looking for talent overseas. So just try to connect as much as possible with people from the whole industry, not just clubs. I talk with, about federation, that they are trying to grow as well quickly, uh, about leagues, that they are getting more and more professionals. So try to be there all the time, moving yourself and try to get as much as uh, knowledge as possible. So that would be the the, the recommendations that, or suggestions that I could say to you. What on, Edu? What on? Those are great tips, and I think they're valuable for um, you know for all of the people that are listening in, no matter what stage in their career they're at. Obviously, if you're trying to break in, this is you know perhaps resonates a little bit more. But one thing I'd add to the the couple of points that you guys have made, which are very much on spot, is you know, if you, as, as you guys were saying, be, being proactive and also making sure that you add value to the market. So the more that you can look at uh, what the market is like and what you can provide to add value to it, the better position you're going to be in 
for those opportunities to come. So something we see very often um, from our standpoint as an institute is we see a lot of people that are not proactive as, as both yoga and, and Edu were saying is so important to do. So getting out there, looking at what's happening in the trends, if you provide that value to a club or to a federation, to an organization in sports, you know, that's, that's valuable to them. And if, if you're able to dedicate the time and put in the hard work, eventually opportunities are going to come. So I'm really glad that you brought this question up, Akshay, because I know you're such a passionate yeah. and driven guy and, and have um, you know, a really great background. Uh, so I'm sure that uh, opportunities are, are just around the corner for you and for many listening. So thanks for the question. Yeah. Right, now there's a couple more questions that are um, here and uh, coming up, so I'll just uh, mention a few of them. Um, let me see here. Yes, Fernando Barrera. Hi, Fernando. He says, how is Eibar working closely with La Liga to develop a strategy to penetrate the market? And how long do you expect to obtain tangible results in the short term? Yeah. Yoga? Do you want to start? Yeah, you can. You can probably explain how you've been working with La Liga already in Japan. And, yeah. Okay. So for, first, it's true that I don't really like the word "short" in this industry. It's true that uh, everyone talk about short period of time, and here in the when we talk about the internationalization and about uh, a club, we have to try to be. A, we have to think in a strategic way, okay? And to think about the word strategic, that means long. So we have to think always in a long term, okay? Uh, and then about La Liga, for us, we, in a, a small, with a, in, uh, we are a small club, we know, uh, we know about it. So we need as, as much uh, help as, as possible and they give or provide us uh, that support for the whole countries that we, we are trying to, to get in, right? So I'm going to give you some, some examples that we have explained before here with Diego in other webinars. But in, in the case of Japan, for instance, we, we have made several trips to, to Japan trying, to, tr trying to, to expand our brand over there through some events, connecting with media, with journalists from that country, with different agencies. We have tried to, to close down uh, some tournaments for, the, for our grassroots. So all this work, we, 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 it has been done also with La Liga, side by La Liga. Without their supporting, it could be impossible for us to, to have reach what we have done uh, nowadays and about tangible um, profits or, or goals, we have reached, um, we, we, yeah, we have reached uh, the goals that we, ha uh, we, we had and through sponsorships, uh, we have, we had like two Japanese brands in the last years sponsoring Avar. But it's not about a short period of time. We have been working that country for three years. So after one year and a half, two years, we have got results from that. And that's what we are trying to focus on India. We are not just thinking on India for one year. We are trying to get a proper strategy over the country for several years. I don't care in one year, in two years, don't see any euro. But I'm sure that in a long term, we will get one um, huge value for our brand. Secondly, we will get great fans that we will, they will support Avar and start promoting our brand. And thirdly, we will find for sure a way to monetize, monetize all what we, what we have done uh, in that country. That's from our point of view. And I don't know if Yoa wants to add something. Yeah, uh, adding to it, I think the mere success of a league like La Liga is not uh, only reaching or marketing the likes of Barcelona and Real Madrid. The actual real success of La Liga is in like reaching out the potential of a club like Eibar 
and moment we go and approach laliga that we want to be doing special activities in a particular country they are the most supportive to us they just start look, looking forward to engage us even more as well because every ident every every club is part of the league and and when when with all due respect when a club of our size go and approach the league and the league is completely supportive and the the one important aspect of la liga is that la liga strategy is that they don't want to be a top league in any country they they want to be the second best league to the local domestic league so when it comes to india also they want to be the second league which is clear that they don't want to disrupt the local football in this way you can find ways to work with the domestic football as well as promote the values of la liga so we we clearly understand how la liga is functioning and la liga clearly understand like how they can promote a club like eibar so it's all it's all a win win situation and very good for us working together hopefully you can see some important uh, joint ventures coming with la liga in india fantastic gracias fernando por tu pregunta thank you maybe you can thank tell you. us uh, fernando where you're where you're connecting from uh, it'd be interesting to hear uh, or to see in the chat box uh, if you can tell us where you're connecting from if it's from spain or latin america or or somewhere else in the world yeah on that note um we're uh, coming close to the hour uh so thank you for all your questions um we couldn't uh, tackle all of them uh, just because of time constraints but um you know the contact information for all of us is here on screen so you can get in touch with us if you want to you know discuss anything further uh again if you're also interested in in the certificate program get in touch with our team we'll be happy to inform you a little bit more about that and on that note uh, i'd just like to thank both uh, yoga and edu for their time tonight and for once again coming to share and opening the the virtual doors of the club uh, to share uh, you know what you guys are doing and uh, i'm sure that it's it's been of great value to our audience tonight i want to acknowledge me here bruno akshay and fernando for submitting the questions tonight and also as i said before thank you guys for for taking the time to speak with us so thank you yoga and thank you edu our pleasure thank you everyone it was thank our pleasure thank you so much and thank you everyone thank you, thank you everyone nandri see you see you next webinar all the best everybody bye 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 bye